buenos días. Buenos días. Good morning. What a beautiful day. We are so happy to be here with you today. You are important to us. My name is Denise Molina Capers. I am the director of the Department of Racial and Social Justice. And as soon as we're gonna give people an opportunity to sit down. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Les vamos a dar una oportunidad a las personas para que se sientan. Por favor, pongan sus celulares en vibración o silencio. I would like the interpreters to please come up one by one and introduce themselves. Good morning, Namaste. I am Parashuram Puyal. I interpret Nepali to English, English to Nepali. Uh, if you uh, need interpretation in Nepali, you actually have table, you can go there and get headset. Namaskar, I am Parashuram Puyal. I am Nepali to English, I am English to Nepali. I am translated to Gorsu. I am going to get a table, I am going to get a headset. Thank you. Good morning. I will be interpreting from English to Haitian people. Um, if they, if they Haitian people here, just raise your hand. There will be a friend in the back. Just raise your hand, and I will be giving you some. Bonjour tout le monde, mon c'est Libby. Moi, je suis interprète de anglais à créole haïtien. Si quelqu'un qui a besoin d'interprétation, de parler derrière et puis de venir au bout de ma bonne route. Merci. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rafael Peruzu. I'm the interpreter for Portuguese. So if anyone needs Portuguese interpretation, uh, the table over there, Samadiva, you can have uh, the headset. So, bom dia a todos e todas. Eu sou Rafael Peruzu. Quem precisar de headsets para interpretação de português para inglês, inglês, português, por favor, se dirija à mesa do Samadiva ali. E depois também vamos nos apresentar. Ok? Uma boa reunião a todos. Okay. Hi, good morning, I'm Marie. I'm part of the team of interpreters today. Um, okay, um, so if anyone needs Spanish interpreting, we, we're ready to give you one of the headsets back there. Buenos días, mi nombre es María, estoy aquí para servirles en la interpretación de español e inglés. Eh, si alguien necesita escuchar ese idioma, por favor diríjanse a la mesa de atrás para darles el monitor que necesitan. Gracias. Hi, my name is Wei. I'm the Mandarin interpreter for this meeting today. Hey, 大家好，我是您的普通话的国语翻译。啊，如果你你是说国语的话，或者是听普通话的话呢，你到后面它有个呃，有一个可以拿这个同传的这个带着啊机的，你可以听到我同传的这个翻译。啊，如果你现在还没有拿到的话，可以去那边去拿。啊，非常非常方便。啊，就这样，祝你们好运。好，拜拜。Good morning. My name is Adrian Pomeroy. I am the ADA coordinator with the city of Somerville, and we have two ASL interpreters with us this morning. If that is something you are in need of, uh, starting us off is Sean, and then we also have Melissa, and they will switch off about every 20 minutes or so. If you need to see them we do have some seats up front here uh, so you can better see the sign language thank you so much i would like to say this meeting is being recorded 
um, the link to the video will be available on Summer Voice. I wanted to introduce our Madam Mayor, first and foremost. Um, Madam Mayor, you have the floor. with you shortly. I wanted to acknowledge her presence. This is very important to her and that is why we are here today. Um, again, this meeting is being recorded. I have other staff to introduce. I wanted to call particular attention to departments represented here today. Again, we have the Department of Racial and Social Justice staff that is present here today. We have the Council on Aging. We thank the Council on Aging for their effort to maintain um, the independence of our older community, older community. Um, specifically, Ashley Spiloidis is here. She's in the back. Thank you, Ashley. I would also like to um, introduce um, Tom Galagani from Economic Development, and Mr. Rich Raish, and Melissa Woods from Capital Projects. Sonia from Office of Housing Stability is also here. I don't know. All right. So some house rules. Reglas de la casa. The meeting is being translated, as you heard, in six languages, including sign language. Those meeting language assistants and presenters are wearing headsets. When we get to the question and answer period, there will be someone with a mic that will approach you and announce if you have a question. If you have a question that is being asked other than in English, please allow us time to switch channels to be able to interpret what you are saying. We welcome the question, no matter what language you want to say it in. Just give us some time to be able to translate it so that everyone can understand and hear you. I will relay the questions or statements in English on the mic for audience members that do not have headsets. We're asking everyone, just like I'm doing right now, to speak slowly so that we give our ASL interpreters and our language interpreters the opportunity to translate in time. Um, we have been given cards and so if someone is speaking too quickly, you will see the cards pop up in a different color. That just means, please slow down. We have some community agreements for this meeting. First and foremost, we want to be respectful. We want to be respectful of everyone present. We want to be respectful of city staff. We want to be respectful of our interpreters. Let's be respectful. Let's be respectful of our fellow community members. Let's be respectful of everyone's time. We want you to share your thoughts. Please understand that we are giving everyone a set time limit. If I prompt you and say it is time, it's not that we are dismissive of your thoughts or your questions, it's that we want to give everyone the opportunity to speak. So please be respectful of everyone's time. Share your thoughts, share your comments. Please be mindful of the time. 
if the Brown community agreements are not followed, we may have to ask you to leave. We will do so respectfully. We will do so in a dignified manner. But again, this has to do with respecting everyone who's present. And now I would like to introduce our Madam Mayor, Katiana Valentine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see you all. So I was, um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Denise and thank you the, to the team from the city for getting this organized. I'd also like to recognize some of my uh, colleagues in government, President of the City Council and Councilor for Ward 1, Matt McLaughlin, he's in the back. <laughs> Councilor at large, Kristen Strezzo, over Hi. here. Hi. Councilor at large, Jake Wilson, also in the back. There's any other counselor? I think I, I got everybody. I just introduced her. Uh, um, please, uh, someone let me know, okay? Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you to all of you who have written to us or come to other meetings on this project. We need your voice. There's no question about that. That's why we're here. It's why I'm here. I wanted to come personally to listen to the concerns and ideas of Cobble Hill residents. We will continue to have more conversations with larger neighborhoods and the community. You are welcome to attend those discussions as well. But today, this is your meeting. I'm also here because I want you to hear it from me. We've put down our pencils. The design of the building is on pause. So we can take community feedback into account before taking more steps forward. And this round of feedback starts with you. But before we start, I'd like to know a little bit about who's in the room, and of course in this case, who's in this parking lot. So I'm going to ask a few questions. Would you raise your hand if you live in Somerville? Would you raise your hand if you live in the broader neighborhood, including Cobble Hill or in Union Square or East Somerville? Would you raise your hand if you live in Cobble Hill, right here in this building next door? Okay. Um, would you raise your hand if you use public transit? Would you, yeah, buses, trains, okay. Would you raise your hand if you walk? Excellent, wow, active group. Would you raise your hand if you've lived in Somerville under a year? Okay. Okay, how about five years and under? Please raise your hands. Ten years and under. Awesome. Fifteen years and under. Wow. Twenty years? Okay, awesome. Eighty-six. I can't beat that. How about over? 25 years, would you raise your hand? Oh, wonderful. Um, multi, say, say that 
Multi-generational. Okay, so would you raise your hand if you live in a multi-generational household? No, I mean multi-generational with any Oh, okay. Well, how about multi uh, intergenerational? Sorry. So, uh, been here for decades. Would you raise your hands if you like uh, donuts? Okay, all right. So, great. Thank you. Um, I met here at Cobble Hill with some of you about this project last December after I was elected mayor. But that's not my first time here. Some of you may remember, but I first got involved with Cobble Hill about 20 years ago, back in 2002 when the owner wanted to convert the building to market rate housing. The use of affordable housing was legally expiring. With Somerville Community Corporation, where I was a volunteer board member and activist, I got involved. We fought to keep the building affordable, and we won. That's partly why current Cobble Hill residents are able to call this their home today. I've been advocating in similar ways for Somerville residents for decades. That won't change just because I'm mayor. Rather, that's why I became mayor. I wanted to better serve you. So when I say I'm here to take your thoughts and concerns seriously, I mean it. But I also want to be clear, this community is full of lots of different people with lots of different opinions. As mayor, I have to consider all of those opinions. Then it's my duty to find a solution that best meets both individual needs and community needs. And on this project, I've heard lots of conflicting opinions. And I'm aware of great community needs. So, to be sure we get to the best solution for all of us, I'd like to ask you to also think like a mayor as you participate in this discussion. Don't get me wrong, please still speak up for your individual concerns but please also commit to working with us to best address those concerns and still deliver needed resources to the full community. So before I hand this over to the staff and you, I want to share exactly what I'm considering and hoping as mayor. I have five parts here. First, we need public safety building for the, for the city, no matter what public safety looks like in the future. We are working on a process to re-envision public safety. But whether a traditional police force or social workers or workforce training is part of how we deliver public safety, we will need a building for the people who are doing that work. It can take a city many years to get a building planned, approved, located, designed, and built. That is why we have been designing public safety building projects to be a flexible, flexible space. We are planning for it to be ready to accommodate public safety no matter the form they take. I hope you will keep working with us on that intention. 
Second, number two, we need a fire station in this area to protect lives, homes, and businesses. The city evaluated and landed on this location as the best site that can meet this vital need. I fully understand, completely understand, that siren noise is a concern. And I ask only that you give the staff a chance to explain plans for reducing siren noise in this area. This is the exact same approach that's working across the city at the fire stations in other neighborhoods. Third, this lot has been vacant for years and I want you and the neighborhood to have better services and amenities next door. The court gave us permission to take the lot for a public safety building, but they said we were allowed to also include other uses as long as we build the public safety building too. Options include a park, a storefront for shops and services, affordable housing, or more. I want to work with you and the neighborhood to figure out what that should be. Private developers must only meet zoning code. If the city doesn't develop this lot, you will have far less say in what happens. I want you to have the say. Fourth, as mayor, I have to be careful with our tax dollars. With the unanimous approval of the city council at the time, which includes six current city council members, and I am one of them, the city spent roughly $8 million on this property and has invested significant time, money, since the start of the designing of this building or this, this lot. To protect the investment of public dollars that was made in good faith, we hope, or my hope is, that we can work with you to make sure the designs and the plans work for you. I'm hoping you will commit to letting us work with you to ensure you have trees and green space that we work to manage parking impacts and be sure the nose, uh, excuse me, the noise reduction plans or building design works for you. The fifth, I understand that many of you felt that you were not heard early on in the process. I know the staff worked very hard on outreach and options to participate. But we are always striving to improve. As mayor, I'm committed to making that when we reach out to the community that we will do our best to be sure everyone who wants to be heard has a chance to join in. We are pausing now again to listen for that reason. With that, I'll turn over the mic to Rich Raich, the Director of Infrastructure and Asset Management. I'll be here throughout the meeting and afterwards as well if you want to talk to me directly. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to everyone here, not only for taking the time on this beautiful morning, but also for your engagement thus far and your continued uh, attention on this as we work on this important issue. It's surprisingly difficult to get everyone's attention on the issues and projects that the city manages. The good news is that we have your attention, and we're very enthusiastic to hear what you have to say and gain your input. Uh, on this project. 
Now that awareness is heightening, our team, our entire team, that is in charge of the Navi Washington Street project, is anxious to make this the best project it can possibly be. As the owners of Navi Washington Street, we are not motivated by profit in its development. We are motivated to provide the maximum community benefit to the direct neighbors, to the area surrounding 90 Washington, and to the city as a whole. In the coming months, we will be holding a series of meetings in different settings at the abutter, neighborhood, and citywide scales so that we can get input from all of those stakeholders. Before we move forward with any further design or construction, we will engage with all those stakeholders so that we can deliver the best project possible. This morning, we are starting with you, the direct of the Butters, the residents of Cobble Hill, and we want to focus on your concerns today. There will be other opportunities to move forward. Everyone's invited to all of these meetings, but we do want to focus stepwise as much as we can so that we can understand fully what the real concerns are before we move forward. As we have this discussion, I do want to be open and honest regarding what is and isn't up to consideration. For the city to move forward with the overall 90 Washington Street project, we must include a public safety building, including Engine 3. There are several reasons for that, in terms of real estate availability, in terms of the city's investments to date, in terms of addressing city-wide infrastructure needs, in terms of overall community benefits. In our questions and answers here, we are very happy to get into those details. And apologies for us. Ooh. I speak very quickly, so it's painful for me to speak slowly. Uh, <laughs> um, we, we are happy to get into the details of why we need a public safety building here, but I really hope that in this meeting and in the meetings that we have in the future, that we focus most of our energy into making this the best project possible. If you have concerns about a public safety building in general, or at this location in particular, I want to hear what those concerns are so that we can mitigate those impacts. If you have ideas about how to improve public safety or a public safety building, let's focus on that so that we can build the best possible project. If you have ideas regarding what to put on the rest of the site or what to protect on the site as it currently is, let's focus on that so that we can build the best project possible. What we want to do is put together a package, both in terms of the public safety building and the other pieces of the parcel so that we can deliver the best project possible. Now to be clear, as we move forward, there are, in addition to the community engagement, we do have to seek funding from the city council. We also have to make decisions as to whether the project is, is defined, fulfills the city-wide needs. There are a lot more hurdles to get over and stage gates to get through. Uh, but we want to make sure that what we're, what we're proposing really is what the community needs and wants. We have various staff here today from the different departments that are involved in the 90 Washington Street project to answer your questions, but more importantly, to take your feedback. We really want to build this project correctly. We want to understand what your concerns are, what your interests are, what your desires are, so that as we spin our consulting team back up, we are designing the project to your wants, needs, and desires. So with that, uh, I will hand it over to Denise to, to help facilitate, uh, and uh, I look forward to this uh, engagement and to the engagement in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. I would, um, I would like to acknowledge that Sonia Conde from Office of Housing Security is with us now. Sonia is great. Yep, it is. I would also like to acknowledge that uh, George Proakis 
from OSPCD is also with us over here. I would like to remind everyone to please put their cell phones on silent or vibrate. Please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate. So, um, the time has come for the opportunity for testimonies. I will be keeping time. So if you see me looking down at my cell phone, it's not that I'm not listening, it's that I'm looking at the time so that I can hold all of us accountable to be able to listen and hear from everyone who wants to speak. We will cap the time two to three minutes, depending on how many people want to speak. And we have many people here, so we will give people an opportunity. If we're running short on time, we'll cut it down to two minutes. Um, Melissa Woods, who is over here, will be taking the mic and walking around so that you may be able to speak into the mic. Again, if you would like to speak, raise your hand. She would come to you and be acknowledged. If you are speaking in a different language, give us an opportunity to translate it to the audience. And that way everyone can hear what you have to say. So, Mr. Ted Fields and Ms. Jen Mencia, Jen Mencia and Ted Fields will be documenting your statements. We want to make sure that we have this information available to us so that we are able to make sure that we're listening and understanding correctly your needs and your wants. This is important to us. So, if you would like to testify, um, please raise your hand and Ms. Woods will walk up to you and acknowledge you to speak. Hi, you want me to stand up? Sure. Yeah, stand up. Tell me if everybody can hear me. We can hear you. Good. Morning, Mayor and everybody. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, Mayor, I keep wanting to call you your honor, like a judge. And then I question, why? You represent power. You represent justice. You represent fairness, balance, and equality for all the people, especially the ones that have voted for you. You listen to the people. You make the final judgment, pretty much. Yes, you have a city council as well. Many residents could not make the meeting as they are disabled or shut-ins, but I still want their voices heard and their needs met. The people voted for you. You needed us. Now we need you. City Hall has planned and replanned for 90 Washington Street Public Safety Building. People don't want to put it there. We are old, but we're not invisible. We, I want to be here for the rest of my life. I don't want to hear sirens going off all the time. And it's not just about me. It's about the green space. It's about the birds. It's about the people who live here. Okay? Their needs need to be met. I understand that you have things that must be built, but do they really all have to be here? We could use a laundromat. We could use a convenience store. Some people who have walkers or scooters used to go to that plaza and just go to the store, and they would hobble over there, but they would go. It would give them a reason to go out of their houses, which, I, again, I say a lot of them are shut-ins, and it breaks my heart that this is going to be a building or might be a building that's in our face. It's not just about where I live facing the green space. It's the noises that will scare the hell. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. My nerves are shot to hell. I'm not alone in this. 
We all have families. We want our peace and quiet. We need this. We, you need to respect what we have, our feelings. We understand you have to do certain things, but I want to say one more thing, Mayor, and all due respect, you know, I want to believe, as messed up as the world is in politics today, that we have a mayor that we can believe in, that you really hear what we're saying, really, truly. We have listened to everybody in City Hall, meetings after meetings, and watched slides after slides about the size of the building. Honestly, I don't care about... Thank you, I got it. Okay? But please, listen, really listen. Would you want your parents to live here? and to be disturbed and scared to death and lose this? No. And the trees, but I mean, respect us. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, uh, I'm Tracy Barahona. I have been with my family in Somerville for well over 20 years. Thank you for hosting today's event. Thank you for coming and listening to us. Um, Mayor, you, you went through your five core elements of elements of importance for you and what we're trying to achieve here. So I just wanted to kind of address the fact that it just doesn't sound at this moment that you're taking into consideration options outside of including a public safety building here. It sounds like that is already court mandated. It sounds like it's already well in development, even though you did note at the beginning of you know opening the series here that the plans for the design of the building uh, is on pause. Uh, regardless of that, I think, you know, even hearing the previous individual that was speaking right now, there are other elements that could potentially be here. We already have a working fire station. We already have a working police station. The noise, even as we've been sitting here, it's, you know, it's noticeable when you hear sirens come through, even though it's not very often. Uh, the concern is also about increased traffic when we already know how backed up Washington Street can get, not only because of it being reduced to including the bike lane, but also because of the traffic lights underneath the, the bridge. I live very locally, I live off of Franklin Street. There's also the school traffic that we need to contend with and the fact that we also have a lot of one-way streets around here. So I think in essence, it would be great for us to figure out an alternative option outside of that public safety building that could be situated here. And I personally would like to understand what other locations were vetted and understand if we do need to forge ahead with that idea of putting the public safety building here here, what is being done to mitigate the noise, to mitigate the traffic, because it is of major concern, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way here. Thank you. My name is Gary and I live here, I've lived here over 30 something years. When I first moved here, it was very quiet, sorry. Um, there were stores and buildings, there was a storefront over there. People went back and forth, you know, if they needed milk, whatever they may need it. And then all of a sudden, you know, that building went, went down and it's just been sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And so now we have to go all the way over to the gas station on the other side. So for myself, you know, I, I, you know, I'm here. I, I live here. I've lived here for many, many years, and I feel like this property and this place, you know, there's there's been nothing here. Uh, there's nowhere, you know, we keep this green space so you can walk our dogs. We can go back and forth. We can socialize. We know who's, you know, who's here. And, you know, I think that setting up a new building, you know, where where's where's our property? How, how are we going to continue to protect our property? We're not going to people coming in, strangers. You know, it's it could be frightening. It could be scary. You know, what about theft? And 
on different crimes and I'm just wondering what the safety factor is. Do you intend on providing more safety policies? Um, you know, this build about the building that we live in here. Now the building that we live in is old and now we're going to have to hear all that construction and I'm not sure how that would affect the stability of this building and the other buildings as well. You know, these buildings have been here for a very, very long time. So with some sort of demolition and construction happening, what is, you know, what does that mean? Are there any concerns for the structure of our building? And that's it. Thank you. Okay, we got in the corner here and then uh, get ready to speak after this one. Hi. Hello, my name is Eileen Schofield and I'm a local resident on Knowlton Street. I have been listening to the noise for years in this neighborhood with the construction of the GLX with the goal that this area will be uplifted. This area has been forgotten. You know, you're right, there isn't anywhere for the residents of Cobble Hill to go. And I see them walking around an empty parking space at Cobble Hill. It's full of dirt and trash from the snow that was collected through the winter. I see them going down sidewalks that are filthy and full of knit bottles and garbage and dog poop, and no one cleans it up. You know, we need a public safety building. I'm not arguing that point. If any one of you have ever set foot inside the current police building or fire building, you will know how depressing and moldy and gross it is. And our, our employees of this city have to go there and work every single day. And then they come out and we're against them. We need something from there to work for them to increase their level of work so that they can support the neighbors too. We can do this as a joint project. Have a park, have a, a, an open space with performance area. Put in a grocery store that, so that I can walk to a store. I'm physically able to walk. Many are not that lucky. Going to stop and shop is not an easy walk. Going to the gas station is not an easy walk. We need more infrastructure in this area. Please build up East Somerville, the way that you have built up the rest of Somerville. Don't build down in this area. We need you, and we need you to look at our area closely. So as a local resident and somebody who has lived here for 10 years and my family have been here for 35 to 40 years, I thank you for listening. Thank you. I'm going to give one more person the opportunity to speak and then give um, our staff an opportunity to respond to the five testimonies and we'll start it up again after their response. Okay. Um, I just want to speak to the value of an urban green environment that's established and that it is not being treated as a very important factor in what happens. Um, just the way the residents of Cobble Hill have not been treated as if they living here were important. Um, and those two entities, a living green environment and the human being, the 300 people who live here, should be a major planning and design factor in whatever takes place. That berm is filled with nasty stuff, and we know that. And it needs to be either protected as is, or if you plan to remove it, our safety has to be a procedural factor in what you do. Thank you. I would like to give um, Madam Mayor first an opportunity if she has if she has a response or George Proikis. Thank you. Can, can you all see and hear me right here? Okay, thanks. Um, I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak today. Um, my name is George Proakis. 
I'm the executive director of our Office of Strategic Planning and Community Development. Um, and that's a big, long name for a department, but what my team is really trying to do is working with Rich's team, the infrastructure team, who you've heard from him before, um, on making sure we understand a, a great future for this entire site. Not, not just a public safety building, but the entire site. The, the land that the city has, has here is a lot bigger than what we need for a public safety building. It is the reason we put some ideas together and started talking about a plan of what else to do. We have no decisions made on what the rest of that might be. Um, there's been some talk, I believe, about us wanting to put lab buildings on that site or something else on that site. That's really something we want to talk to the whole community about. I've heard comments about having green space as a part of that site, having a, a gathering place as a part of that site. That is still something we want to talk in the big picture about. I want, before we go on, to just spend two minutes talking about how we ended up where we are, because I think it's important to understand where we're going from here. Um, I've been working for the city for 12 years. Um, quite a few years ago, I can't remember when, maybe seven years ago, um, I, we received a visit in the previous mayor's office um, from the owner who owns Cobble Hill Apartments and at the time owned that little that little shopping area where all of you had the, 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 the convenience store and the donut shop and everything there. They came to us with a plan. They wanted to build new housing, market rate housing, not affordable housing. Um, it was a building that was going to be along Washington Street. Um, their plan had a couple of key pieces to it. One piece was they were going to use this parking lot to support the new building rather than your existing buildings. So they wanted to put this parking lot with the new building. They were going to put a road where the berm is and they were going to take out all the trees. That was their plan. And their plan went all the way through city review process. Um, I'm not sure how many of you were living here at the time, but residents at Cobble Hill, a lot of them came out and supported that plan. Um, and then, after that plan was approved, and we were waiting for it to get built, the owners closed your shopping center, closed your access to a place to go. Um, the, they divided the lot, so they put this line on the lot that divided it, that put this parking lot with, with that site. And then, after they did that, um, the owners, Mr. Corcoran and one of his partners, Mr. Mullins, started suing each other, fighting over who was going to get the profits from this very profitable building and how it was going to work. And they left the site vacant. They left the building empty. It was falling apart. They left the site empty. And that was the point where we started looking to see what we could do for a public safety building. Now, I, if we have time later, I can dive into the question of other places we looked and other things we considered. Um, but when you try to place a fire station, there's a lot of limits in terms of where you want people to respond to a fire station. And this site became very appealing. Um, it also was vacant, was blighted. It was left blighted because people suing each other over profits. Um, we decided that it was better in the hands of the community. Now, I I understand we have spent the last we spent the last year trying to get get meetings and get conversations and some of the conversation between us and your building owners have been a little difficult because um, you know we took that land from them by eminent domain um, they didn't want us to come meet with you in your coffee hours I'm really happy we're all here right now I'm hoping we can all hear each other out see where we can go from there. Um, there have been some questions about sirens, about, about noise, about buildings, about the berm. I want to have people have a chance to respond and has, have, have the conversation we need to have. But I just want to, all, all of that, we did stop the actual design. I mean, if there's a way to move, shift, change, adjust, address, I want us all to consider those things. So I just wanted to put that out there. I want to go back to all of your comments. And after a few more people speak, I think someone from our team may have a little bit more to share as well. So, so thank, thank you. you. Um, we'll take five more testimonies at this point in time.
if someone has a question or a testimony. Uh, my name is Chad Marimaldi. I live in Cobble Hill as a former first responder up at Gillette Stadium, so I do work closely with police, fire, and medical. I do understand the need of a public safety building, but what I don't understand is what's so bright about all these trees in the hill that's all around us. Why take away all these trees when the only blight area is on the other side of that fence? It's just taking away our peace of mind. I quit my job at Gillette Stadium because I knew I could not perform my job there. So my condition right now is if I had to respond to an emergency, I couldn't do it as quick as I could. So I had to quit my job. Now I can't do it. It's just I don't understand what was the sense of taking away all this added property just for the public safety building. And not only that, why put it next to an elderly and disabled community? Thank you. Do we have another testimony in the back? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. My name is Michael Cochran. I'm, uh, uh, I both work for the uh, owner, manager of Cobble Hill. Um, I just like to, uh, the, the city is presenting kind of a false narrative of what went on here. Um, we did, in fact, work extensively with the city to develop a new apartment building. The city was completely involved and encouraged us to do more density. In fact, they insisted that we design a second high-rise building uh, in order to get permitted for the building we have. So uh, it was never about profits. Uh, we, of course, are for-profit developer. We were not fighting with partners over profits. We had one of the partners um, who frankly got scared of developing um, market rate housing in Somerville and sued us to stop developing it. Both Corcoran and Jenison, it's a Corcoran Mullins Jenison, it's often referred to as Corcoran Jenison. There was a third partner, Mullins, uh, who sued to stop the development. We went through the system he went to the Supreme Court to stop us from developing. We never wanted to stop this development, so it's just a false narrative that the city is presenting that Corcoran or Jenison ever wanted to stop this development. They, they're completely aware we never did. They were handed the case. We were in litigation because we wanted to complete this development. So. Uh, and Thank I think you, it's sir. great that you, you people sir. are finally being heard because you've been ignored. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other testimony? On the left side of the room. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Stephen Fleith. I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Racial and Social Justice. And I've been asked to read this letter on behalf of 50 Cobble Hill residents. Dear Mayor Somerville, Katiana Ballantyne, we are a group of Cobble Hill Apartments senior residents. We would like to bring to your attention our point of view regarding the public security building to be placed next to the property where we live. We fear to publicly express our opinion 
on account of a possible retaliation by the Cobble Hill administration. The invitation letter in English and Spanish that we received last week from Cobble Hill Apartments for this meeting with you, the Mayor of Somerville, on May 25th is very clear. Quote, management would like for all residents to come out and show the Mayor of Somerville that Cobble Hill residents are totally against placing a municipal building at 90 Washington Street Close quote. Please see attached letter. Once again, we feel intimidated because some residents have often approached us insisting that we sign a petition against the project without even asking if we are against this initiative. We have participated in all the meetings offered by the City Hall team, both virtually and personally, to better understand what is really happening so we can express an educated opinion. We have never seen so many meetings on this topic promoted by the Copple Hill administration. Furthermore, the meetings are always in English and sometimes partially in Spanish, which makes it impossible for us to understand what is happening. Despite the many requests we've made over the years about the lack of security and other issues at Cobble Hill, we've never had the right to have a meeting and be heard. In addition, none of our complaints resulted in anyone taking any action. Thus, we do not understand why there is a resistance to support the municipal security building on 90 Washington Street. Many residents have been victims of the lack of security here, including the recent theft of vehicle parts, the vehicles were parked inside the property, and complaints about non-residents walking freely in the property. We have been communicated with the we have communicated with the administration our concerns, but they not only haven't taken action, but said they are not responsible for what happens in the common external area as well. Therefore, we believe that the public security building could protect us from these many situations which are not addressed by Cobble Hill administration. <clears throat> we appreciate your time to read this letter. Our group, about 50 seniors, is open to meet in person at your convenience if needed. Best summer, some Cobble Hill residents. Thank you. We have um, one more testimony before we give staff the opportunity to respond. Anyone? One more testimony. Not the end of it, just we're taking turns. Do we have another testimony? Hi, again. Um, the woman from Knowlton Street, I appreciate everything that everyone had to say. Um, my issue is true, yes, we do need, you know, fire prevention in the police department and stuff, but we really don't need the noise as much as it's going to be. But I do appreciate it, and about the mess that's been over there. As far as this gentleman that just read the letter, I'm glad to hear that. I didn't know anything about that, and I think a lot of other people don't know that. And this is very new to me. I've been living here for a long time. But anyhow, I wanted to ask the mayor are like some places they have like a separate police station and a separate fire station why would we be subjected to having all of this here you know if the noise is bad enough when we listen to even when you were speaking everybody heard the fire engines or sirens go by I feel bad for the pre the people in the church that are praying amen hallelujah woo woo you know, the people over Oliveira's that are eating, having a nice dinner. Maybe somebody wants to say, I want to marry you. Woo, 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 woo. You know, 
um, any place. The people that bought the condos that don't know what's going on yet. Or surprise, okay, surprise, and people are going to be scared to hell. They don't know. Once, you know, it's came to a surprise as many people, still now as I talk to people, they don't know what is going on here. Are you serious? But that's all I have to say. Thank you, and please think of us, all of you, when you're doing this, when you're building. You don't want to be here. You really don't. And I appreciate it. Please really hear us from Cobble Hill and the surrounding communities. I beg you. Thank you. I will now give staff the opportunity to speak. I'm going to also limit staff to a certain amount of time. So um, thank you to the 50 residents who wrote about uh, sadly not feeling that their voices were heard. So I want to say that's not acceptable. Um, thank you for sharing the letter. I want to also point out that Sonia Conde, if you could raise your hand again, you're in the yellow from the office. She's in the yellow uh, from the Office of Housing Stability. That if you, you have some concerns about your housing and how you're being treated, to please reach out to her today. And for some of the technical questions, I will pass it over to Rich. Thank you. Uh, I can't resist the pun. Make some noise if your primary concern is the noise. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think I think this is yeah. I think this this is one that we've been hearing, and and one that is valid. We'll go over here. Um, the noise. So, as is rightly pointed out, as we've been sitting here, we have heard a few sirens. The public safety building is not here, and yet you're still hearing the sirens. That is not uncommon. Um, and we can mitigate the siren noise at the fire station and at the public safety building better than we can anywhere else in the city. I am also a Somerville resident. I've lived here for 25 years. I lived across the street from the Engine 7 on Highland Ave for about five years. And I now live across the street uh, in more of a residential neighborhood from a halfway house. I guarantee you, I hear the sirens more now than I did when I lived across the street from Engine 7. The reason being is that the lights in front of the fire departments, both that one, the one in Teal Square, and elsewhere, are timed, and the fire department has control over them such that when they exit the firehouse, they do not have to blare their sirens. It stops traffic, they pull out. When they get back, they're able to stop traffic to pull in. When they are elsewhere in the city, they don't have that full control, and that's when the sirens blare. Similarly, for the public safety building, public safety does not dispatch, police department does not dispatch from police headquarters. The entirety of their responding fleet, with the exception of some specialty vehicles, are already out on the street. In fact, at shift change, they don't even come back to headquarters. They generally do shift change in the neighborhoods. We do not anticipate citing public safety here to be generating as much noise as one would fear it to be. We're happy to take a deeper dive into that. I'm happy to have both chiefs available for future meetings so that we can go into depth on dispatch and on fire response and the impacts to the, the neighborhoods surrounding the public safety and fire. Um, but the idea of um, this generating noise that you don't already hear uh, is, is a falsehood. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I value your I value your comment, but we can't. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we want to give one last opportunity for testimonies. 
If you have already um, asked a question or testified, we would ask that you please um, hold off. Staff will remain after this meeting and you can speak with them directly. Um, but for the moment, if we have any new questions or testimonies, we would like to take those before we um, begin ending. I am Anley Bokorat. I did the building 50. Um, my name is Anli Bokrap. I live building 50. When I find out you are going to take away a piece for the area, we wrote a letter. Um, I'm going to mayor uh, who work in our city hall. And we wrote first letter to every one of you and we don't have a response. I am very disappointed. Wait for next vote. And I will have to think about it. Thank you. Do we have another testimony? On the left side here. If everyone can please um, talk loudly into the mic so we all can hear you. Uh, on behalf of uh, this person here, thank you, neighbor uh, to Cobble Hill. Uh, these trees are the most sure trees in East Somerville and have a great importance. In addition, at the last virtual meeting, these residents here joined virtually were, closer to the, uh, were counted as uh, one opinion. At, at one vote. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Melissa, I believe we had a testimony on this side. Of the day. will be speaking in Portuguese. So thank you, Lisa. I'll translate on the mic. Uma coisa que estou preocupada, eu moro aqui há 11 anos, aqui no 84, e gosto muito daqui. É um lugar muito bom para nós. Eu estou muito satisfeita de morar aqui. Porém, eu estou preocupada no momento é o estacionamento. Eu estaciono meu carro ali. Aqui, e eu não posso perder isso porque eu já tenho idade para não andar procurando onde estacionar meu carro e eu ajudo as pessoas que posso aqui então é muito importante esse lugar para mim para estacionar meu carro então é uma coisa que está me preocupando e a outra coisa tem uma situação aqui com aquelas to have a, a, a place to live where she can't find parking. Yeah. The second thing is... And the other thing is, this part here, these trees there, my car has been damaged with that when it has to be stationed on that part. Thank you. 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 É uma coisa que me preocupa e, e uh, eu, eu preciso que venham dar uma maneira de como sair dessa. E obrigada, então, por este momento, por a atenção de todos. Tchau. Obrigada. Ela disse que a segunda coisa é que o alternativo de parking tem causado damage ao seu veículo várias vezes. E ela não sabe como lidar com isso, mas é algo que 
is concerning to her and it's hard for her to deal with. And again, she thanks us for this important time. Our next testimony. Good morning. My name is Henry John McNabb. I live on Franklin Street. I lived here all my life. A couple of weeks, I'll be 73 years on Franklin Street. I've seen a lot of stuff go on in the city of Somerville. My in-laws over there, Mr. and Mrs. Elfish Snow, live down here. I remember when that lot was an oil company. My grandfather worked there during the Depression years. My mother grew up on Joy Street, Brick Bottom. Four generations in Somerville. It's a shame that you can just move in here and tell these people this is what's going to happen. I'm like the mayor of Somerville on Franklin Street. I've seen mayors, uh, all the men, politicians come and go. But I think all these people are here for a reason. They want what's good for them. And we all want what's good for East Somerville. Years ago, this was part of Charlestown. Not more seeing but go to the Bryan Highway cuts us off. It's a disgrace. If my mother was still living today, she would be sitting here right beside me. She was the president of the Gold Star Mothers, and I'm a Vietnam vet. She always would go up to the mayor's office, and she was heard. All these people should be heard and will be heard, and I think we should have the next meeting up at the East Community School where people can sit down and have an open discussion and not only talk for two or three minutes. They are, excuse my French, really upset, and I don't blame them. I came from a family of seven, and I'm raising six kids, and we all live in Somerville in my house. So right is right, wrong is wrong, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of shady stuff going on I don't like, and I will speak up for me, especially my opinion, but for all these other people. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. At this time, we have time for one more testimony. Again, this is translation. If you can please go slow and give me time to, to translate what you're saying. Can't hear you, this next speaker will be asking a question in Portuguese. Okay. So, one moment while they switch over the Eu quero é cumprimentar a todos aqui com uma alegria muito grande participar dessa reunião. Meu nome é Cecília Estevão, eu moro ali no 50, já há uns 15 anos. Eu sinto bem confortável aqui, entendeu? Agora Eu estou um pouco, assim, chateada, porque as preocupações que nós estamos tendo agora, ela é tão banal para nós, porque quando nós pensamos... Ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, can the Portuguese translator please come up? I'm not receiving a feed. Get in your ear. Oh, oh boy. Well, that was kind of <laughs> Não tem problema. That's okay. Siga, por favor. Pode falar? Ok. Então, continuando. Então, eu sinto assim agora, muito chateada com essa situação, porque... É claro. Claro, é bom. Nós tínhamos antes aqui umas lojas aí de conveniência, era muito bom, precisava do leite, estava ali, precisava do café, estava ali, tudo bem. Hoje não temos mais. Mas a minha preocupação não é essa. A minha preocupação é nós, assim, priori, ficar pôr na nossa prioridade de barulho, se tem barulho, se não tem. Olha, eu quero dizer para vocês, nós temos famílias que precisam desse barulho. Nós temos família que pode estar passando por necessidade de uma ambulância e nós preocupando com barulho. Depois acontece assim, um acidente, você vai para a televisão, assiste a televisão, vê lá que morreu alguém queimado dentro da casa e você preocupando com barulho. Por favor, preocupa com barulho não, preocupa com o bem-estar de cada um. É claro 
que barulho é ruim, de, não é tão ruim porque passa rápido, acabou. Mas nós preocupar, botar a nossa prioridade com barulho, a prioridade é o ser humano ser salvo, a prioridade é o ser humano ser, ser atendido na hora certa. Entendeu? Por que isso? Depois nós vamos para a televisão assistimos lá o problema, que queimou gente, que morreu criança afogada, que é isso, que é aquilo outro, que não deu tempo de atender. A gente começa a chorar. Ah, não, gente, pensa nisso. Esquece um pouco do eu, de mim, e vamos pensar mais nos outros. E vou falar uma coisa para vocês. Esse país aqui, ele é muito invejado pelo tratamento que se dão, pelo tratamento que se dão ao ser humano aqui. Ele é invejado por isso. E quando nós vemos isso aqui, é um motivo de alegria. Muitas vezes a gente faz até um vídeo e manda para o país da gente. Porque atende muito rápido, atende muito bem. E eles estão cuidando de fazer o bem para nós. Por que nós ficar brigando, preocupando com o barulho? Por favor, me desculpa, mas eu estou bem chocada com esse movimento aqui, só de barulho, de barulho, de barulho. Não fale em outra coisa. Entendeu? Desculpa. Thank you. So she said, she said, um, she understands that we had shops here at some point in time. And it was very nice to have these shops. That was great. And we don't have it anymore. But we are now prioritizing noise or no noise. There are families that need that noise. There are families that need that ambulance. There's accidents that happen. There are people who are dying. If you're not... There are people who are dying. There are accidents that are happening. There are first responders that are needed and you're worried about noise. You're, you should be worried about the well-being of others. The priority should be to save lives. First responders in this country need to be able to get here in time. People forget living in this country about how lucky we are. The people in this country, there are people in other countries who are jealous of the treatment that we get in this country. We send videos back home to our country because the treatment that we get here from first responders is not the same that they get in other countries. I am very shocked that we are prioritizing noise over saving lives. Okay, at this point in time, I would like to end our testimony portion. I would like to uh, I would like to again remind everyone that staff both OHS, OSPCD, Capital Projects, Madam Mayor Valentine, the RSJ director and staff will still be here to listen to you if you need to speak to us directly. Please, we have sign-in sheets. Please give us your information if you want us to contact you directly. This will inform us as well as to how to best stay in touch with you. I want to say that this is not the last time that we will be having these meetings. The Department of Racial and Social Justice is putting together groups and one-to-one -one interviews so that we can talk about your vision for the city and public safety. We want you to talk to us. Please sign in on the back. We have RSJ department staff in the back, if you guys can wave your hands. We have information on how to get in touch with the staff that is present here today, including our department. Um, for the last uh, words, because we did promise we would rotate, I'm going to give the mic first to George Proegis, and then I will have Madam Mayor um, end the meeting officially. 
So I, I, before the mayor speaks, I just want to have a moment to, uh, to thank everybody for coming out today and, and have a moment to think about next steps regarding this, this whole process. Um, I, I have been doing this 12 years in Somerville, almost 20 years in total. Um, it is very important to make sure to hear community voices. This has been the project for which it has been the toughest for us to bring immediate residents and neighbors together to hear their voices. Um, part of that, honestly, has been about a challenge in the relationship between us and the owners at Cobble Hill and our ability to get in and visit you. I know they have meetings with you to give you their perspective on what's going on here. I want to make sure that we get a chance to hear you We've received letters, we, we have your letters, but there's there's nothing more valuable than sitting around a table and talking. We, we tried it once at the Ralph and Jenny Center, probably, I, I will admit, not the best meeting we've ever held. I had my share of challenges myself. I think I got a little short and angry with people, and I'm sorry if I did. I don't think that was my best moment. So, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that was not my best moment. I want us to move forward. I want us to have a chance to interact. I want to have a chance to see if we can find a way, what we can do here and where we can go from here. So this is a beginning, not an end. We need to make sure to do that. Um, we had one suggestion to move meetings inside in the school. Uh, we'll do what folks want us to do. We want to make sure to have that conversation go on. So. Um, I would love to find a way, I, I know there are folks who don't ever want this building, but I would love to find a way to do this building in a way that, that is respectable and works and also achieves a bunch of other goals, whether that be open space, whether that be affordable housing on the rest of this site, whether that be um, a chance to save as many trees where we can. And of course, a big part of this is making sure that whatever we do here returns the amenities to, to that site that, that were lost. Um, many years ago when 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 you know we we all were pursuing that other project and i'll say i i well i stand by my points on my previous comment i don't think mr corcoran was wrong when he said that we were cooperating on that project we were working together the city was encouraging it happening um and now we've reached a point where we have a new new plan a new idea and we want to work with you together on it so i'm going to turn it over to the mayor from there i i hope that we can move forward from here and uh look forward to having the community conversations continue. Thanks. Thank you. So, I want to I say thank you to everyone for coming out. Um, I heard you. I heard the themes. We took plenty of notes down. I would encourage you, if there are other points that you want to do before you leave, grab a marker, write it down on the, uh, the board, whether it's this one or whether it's that one. Um, we will uh, be looking at it. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for meeting with me. And this is the first of, you know, a few meetings and I'm here. Okay, thank you. If you have a headset, please return it to the back table. If you have a headset, please return it to the back table. Thank you, everyone. We will all be here if you need to speak with any one of us. Have a great day.